This video will focus on the historical aspects of the generals and officials from the Three Kingdoms period of China, but will also include information from the romanticised version of events at times. Gong Sun Zan was born at an unknown date and grew up in Xi'an'an, Hebei. In his early life, he studied under Liu Ji, where he befriended his classmate Liu Bei. The local administrator recognised Gong Zun Zan's commanding presence, with his good looks and booming voice, and so he offered to wed his daughter off to him, which Gong Zun Zan accepted. In the year 184, the Yellow Turban Rebellion broke out, Zhang Zhui and his 360,000 followers began pillaging villages, attacking Han officers, and seizing commanderies. Within 10 days, the uprising had spread throughout China, where Yu province and Ji province became hotspots for rebel activity. We know that Gong Zun Zan successfully defeated some rebels when he was deployed by Hei Jin, but it is not recorded precisely where he was assigned. Although we do know Liu Bei led volunteers to resist Xu Jing in Yu province, and Lu Ji was tasked with relieving Ji province. In the Romance of the Three Kingdoms, Gong Zun Zan is nicknamed White Horse General, due to the purely white cavalry unit that he led into battle. This holds historical truth, as it is noted that an elite mounted unit on white horses made up the core of his army, and it is described how their armour and flags lit up the battlefield. This elite unit was recruited around the year 187 by the Han minister Zhang Wen, who required 3,000 of them to aid in suppressing the Liang Province Rebellion. An official requested to lead the unit, but was denied the opportunity, whereafter Gong Zun Zan was assigned as their leader instead, although most of his elite unit deserted due to lack of supplies. In the year 188, the upset official worked with another disgruntled former administrator named Zhang Zhu, and also the leader of the Wuhan tribes, Xi Li Zhu. The three of them united and plundered Xing, Yu, Zhu, and Ji provinces, where they murdered thousands of Han officials and civilians, with Zhang Zhu going as far as to declare himself emperor. Peace was restored to the region when the benevolent Liu Yu took office as the governor of Yu province. He enlisted Gong Zun Zan's aid, recruited the tribes to the northeast, and defeated the rebels, killing Xi Liu Zhu in the process. After this, Ta Dun inherited the leadership of the tribes. In the 190s, Liu Yu and Gong Zun Zan got into a conflict. They disputed the best way to deal with the various ethnic groups and foreign kingdoms further north. Liu Yu was already recognised as a pacifist by the tribes, and had their favour. He suggested to maintain his peaceful policy towards them and the foreigners for the sake of everyone's benefit. Gong Zun Zan, however, wanted to police them with military force instead to keep them in line. Three years of rising tensions passed until Liu Yu felt obliged to lead a 100,000 man army to eliminate Gong Zun Zan. It was important to Liu Yu that this conflict was resolved with minimal casualties, as he cared for the fallen, their families, and the region in which they all lived. One of his own subordinates named Gong Zun Ji had already forewarned Gong Zun Zan of this attack earlier, which gave him time to prepare his army and construct a fortress called Yi Jing. Due to Liu Yu's kind hearted approach to this battle, he lost against the more aggressive Gong Zun Zan, who cared more about his own victory than that of the land. Liu Yu was forced to retreat, so Gong Zun Zan launched a counterattack and captured him within three days, then imprisoned him. An imperial envoy soon arrived from the Han central government, who was ordered to reward Liu Yu for his honourable contributions to the realm. Gong Zun Zan lied about Liu Yu and Yuan Shao conspiring to betray the emperor, and then aggressively convinced the envoy to put a bounty on Liu Yu's head as well as bestowing his titles and rewards onto Gong Zun Zan instead. Word of this soon spread, and some of Liu Yu's own men killed him for the reward. As his head was transported to the capital city, it was intercepted by loyalists who honoured him with the proper burial rites, whereafter it is said many people gathered to mourn his death. Gong Zun Zan was not rewarded with Liu Yu's titles, and was instead assigned in a mopping up operation of Yellow Turban rebels, so he made his way to Xing Zhu in 191. It was around this time Liu Bei joined his forces, and together they restored peace to the region, whereafter Liu Bei was transferred to look after Ping Yuan for Gong Zun Zan. Yuan Shao and Gong Zun Zan rivaled each other for northern China, but the favour shifted towards Yuan Shao when the warlord Han Fu fearfully surrendered his territories to him, much to the displeasure of Han Fu's advisers and Gong Zun Zan. 
Gongsun Zan then noticed a rivalry between the Yuan brothers, who both had eyes set upon central China. He formed an alliance with Yuan Shu and sent his second son, Gongsun Yui, to assist Sun Jian against Yuan Shao, but Gongsun Yui was killed by a stray arrow, which Gongsun Zan then used as a pretext to declare war on Yuan Shao. Gongsun Zan felt safe in his fortress Yi Jing, which had high towers, iron gates, stockpiled food and multiple moats. He would live peacefully with his generals sealed away from the civil wars that ravaged the lands. He allowed his armies to operate at great distances from his chain of command, believing they would fight even harder and with more determination, but it in fact had the opposite effect on his soldiers, as they had more opportunity to revolt, surrender or flee. It took years and multiple assaults before Yuan Shao reached the fortress gates, but in the year 198 the siege got underway. Gongsun San's son, Gongsun Zhu, was sent to request aid from the Haitian bandits, as the plan was to charge out, avoiding Yuan Shao's army, then to meet up with the reinforcements to launch an attack on Ji province, forcing Yuan Shao to lift the siege. Guan Jing advised against this, as he did not believe the soldiers would continue fighting for long once Gong Sun San had left the fortress, as they were only fighting for survival at this point. The new plan was for the reinforcements to position 5,000 men in ambush, then to signal Gong Sun San to charge out the fortress and perform a surrounding manoeuvre against Yuan Shao. But the messenger sent to relay these commands was captured by Yuan Shao, who then laid his own ambush of 5,000 men in the same location. They signalled Gong Sun San into the ambush and surrounded him, causing massive casualties to his unit, which forced him straight back into Yi Ling. Yuan Shao then proceeded to dig tunnels underneath the undermanned fortress walls, erecting support beams as they go. The tunnels were dug to meet up at the centre of the fort, so when the support beams were set alight, it caused the walls and towers to come crumbling down. Gong Sun San realised he was doomed, so he executed his sisters and wives and then set himself on fire within the citadel. Guan Jing, witnessing all of this, felt wholly responsible and ridden with guilt, he charged Yuan Shao's ranks by himself in a dire attempt to redeem his honour. Shortly after this, Gong Sun Xu and 100,000 Hei Shan bandits had arrived to assist, but had to turn back as they were too late. Gong Sun San's head was then sent to Xu Chang as proof of his demise, which secured Yuan Shao's northern domain from any immediate threat. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.